All right, so we are going to talk about we are going to talk about multidimensional arrays. It's going to be two-dimensional arrays. And talking about algorithms and understand what they are, give you an example of a sort thingy in uh, probably a linear search. And, uh, and that's going to be it. Next time I say attention, please, and you keep talking, I'm going to come over there and, yeah. So, attention, please. Long story. Attention, please. That's uh, Few things that I have to tell you. Uh, lots of you use multiple return statements in a function. You cannot do that. Only one return statement in a function is allowed. Remember that. One return state, set statement in a function, you cannot have two. If you are having two return statements, it means you are too lazy either to create an extra, extra, write an extra if statement or create an extra variable. Never ever more than one return statement in a function. Number two, many of you don't read the question. I'm saying write a prototype of a function that does this. You write int main void and you write a program with scanf and printf as if like, Read the question, okay? When it says write a prototype, it's just the prototype, nothing else, okay? And when I say write a function, <clears throat> write a function. You don't need to write a program, okay? Again, there are things that I needed to, I'm going to explain to you one more time. Whenever you are dealing with a function, whenever you see the word saying function receives this and returns that, no printf and scanf is involved, when somebody tells you this function receives three integers and returns a double, no printf or scanf is involved. When it says a function receives three integers, it means it has three arguments and each of them is an integer. Receives integer through the argument and it has a double that it returns out. There is no scanf, there is no printf, unless it tells you this function receives this number from user, there is no scanf ever. Okay? Unless it tells you this function prints the result, there is no printing. If I tell you, like many of you, when I told you to write a, pro write a function that receives two, uh, I think, integers and returns the bigger one, okay? You actually printed the bigger one. Nobody told you to print anything. You're supposed to just return it. Okay? It's always important to, to read the question properly so you don't make a mistake. <coughs> All right. Um, arrays. First, I'm going to talk about arrays and tell you how you can create arrays of arrays. That's the first thing. Arrays of arrays. Okay? And then after that, uh, you will see that arrays of arrays are nothing but a regular array that is just display to you in a different way, okay? But let's do it. So, creating an array of arrays is not a difficult thing at all. Let's say I, I, have, I have two, I have, uh, I have an array of, what, five integers, okay? Let's say I have an array of five integers. So, I'm going to say integer A5, okay? Let's say I have an array of five integers, and then I want to have two arrays of five integers. So what you do, you write integer b5. So now you have a0 to 5 and b0 to 5, right? But if you want to, you can just ignore that. If, if the arrays are not really different, it's series of arrays that you want. Then you can simply say, I want two arrays of five integers. Simple as that. And it works exactly like a regular array, no difference. So A0 becomes the first array. A1 becomes the second array. Now A00 is the first element of the first array. A10 is the first element of the second array. So essentially, when you do something like this, this is what uh, 
compiler simulates for you. So when you say A25, it's as if you actually have uh, a table that it has five cells in it. Okay, so this is zero, this is one, this is zero, one, two, three, four, and this is the array A. So A00, zero, zero, A01. Zero, if I told you what is the second element of the uh, third element of the second array, so this is the second array and that's the third element, this is the one. So essentially it becomes A12, okay? As simple as that. Now if you want three of these, there is no problem. You simply, you simply write over here three, you, you put a three over here, so A35, and doing so, then as if you have the third one over here added. Ugh. I don't want this. To whom I should talk to? Cancel. All right. So, what was this? Yeah, there you go. So, then it becomes two. So, I have a two. I have three arrays of five. It's as simple as that. There is no, no hidden agenda behind it. Good thing is that now you not only can traverse through the elements of an array using a variable, you can actually traverse through the arrays using a variable too. Again, initializing them how they work, it's exactly, initializing, initializing it is exactly like what you have done before with absolutely no difference. Whoops. I hit the wrong thing. There you go. Which means if I have three arrays, I have an array of three things, right? So you're going to write, if we want to initialize this, you do like this. So that's array of three things. So that's the array of three things. One, two, three. And what is, what is every and each of these? Five integers. So say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. This one I'm saying, I'm going to say 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. And the other one I'm going to say 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. Okay? So... And to make this thing make more sense to actually be able to read it properly, usually people do it like this. So it exactly shows you what you have. So this becomes this becomes index zero. And then index one and then index 2, and the other one I don't have to write, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? That's what it is. So, essentially, if I want to write a loop to go through these, I need two uh, indexes. So, I'm going uh, so to write over here integer i and j. Now, I'm going to loop through the array, so I'm going to say 4i set to 0, i less than 3, and I plus plus. And now I want to go through every individual array. So I'm going to, every individual element, I'm going to say 4, J set to 0. J set to 0, J less than 5, and J plus plus. Now in here I'm going to say, for example, printf percent D. And then I'm going to show since they are four, the other one is a four digits, I'm going to put 4D so it looks nice. And in here I'm going to say A, I, and J. Okay? And then after printing every five, I'm going to go to new line. People, this is single code. You cannot put strings in there. That's double code. Double code goes strings in it. Okay, lots of you got half a mark lost on your quiz because you put single quotes when you are actually doing 
Single coat, single character. Double coat, a string literal value. Okay? <coughs> so, if I run this program, it shows exactly what we are dealing with in here. So, let's bring it to here, and this one goes over here. So, when I start, of course, it's all garbage, as you see. As soon as it gets initialized, then you have the values set in them. Are we okay? And then you can open any, every individual thing to see. So 0, 0, 0 is 10, 0, 1 is 20, 0, 2 is 30, 0, 3 is 40, 0, 4 is 50. If I come over here, 2, 0 is 1,000, 2, 1 is 2,000, and so on and so forth. Okay? And if I actually run this program, now J is 0. Uh, I is 0, J is 0, so I, J will print the first one that is 10. Now it's not going to go through the loop. It's just going to add to J. So J becomes 1, therefore 20 is going to get printed. And then 30, 40, and 50. And now the loop is complete. J becomes four, uh, 5. It breaks and comes out. Prints new line goes to new line. And now the second array. So I now becomes 1. So it's now I, A, 1, 0. Therefore, it's 100. And it keeps going like that. 200, 300, 400, and so on and so forth. Finishes. Goes to new line. I becomes 2 now. Now the, the, the third row is going to get printed. And that's going to be that. Go to new line. And I have a printout of my, of my arrays. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now, we are to only do this and not more than this. So I'm going to give you an example of strings too, because array of strings is what's actually craving two-dimensional arrays. You rarely, with the level of knowledge that we have right now, need to create something like this unless you want to do graphics and you want to have matrices and you want to multiply matrices and stuff like that. Otherwise, two-dimensional array for now is not needed. The reason that we need two-dimensional arrays is that because I want to have 50 names kept in an array. How can I do that? One name needs an array of characters, right? So if I want 50 names, I need 50 arrays of characters, which is essentially 50 strings, correct? And because of that, I'm going to need this. Now, how do I fix this so they are all left justified? How do I fix this code? Add a minus. Where? Uh, before, uh, after the percent before 4. After percent before 4. So if I, if I wanted this thing to, to actually work, control F5, and three years later, you'll see that it's actually done. Now it's left justified. And from now on, you do not answer, please. I don't want to teach to a single person. Okay? <laughs> Cuz you always ask my questions and it's good. Not not that I but I want other people to participate too. <coughs> Any questions down to here? Okay, I just want to put these things properly for some reason. Oh, come on, what's going on? Uh, all right, forget it. Okay, so uh, that's that. So let's save this one as zero, 01 two dimensional array. Save. Now I'm going to pause recording. So another two dimensional array that is very useful for us to use is actually an array of strings, which means I want to have 40 names, and each name I want, I want to have five names, and I want each name to be 40 characters long. So I'm going to say character. I want, what did I, how many names I said? 
five. Five names, so character name, five, and how many? 40, 40 characters long each. So it, you have to put 41, remember. So now I have five strings. Name zero is the first one, name one is the second, name two is the third, name three is the fourth, and name four is the fifth one. All right? And I can actually get the names now. What's going on over there? Share it with us. What's going on? You okay? Everything's good? Yes. Okay. So, thank you very much for the previous row. Okay, I, this get string that I have written didn't work, so I have to put the manual one that I have. Let me bring these two in, actually. It's a good idea to bring the I.O. over here to... To, so I'm going to bring these two files. Copy. And put it in here. Okay. So let's add those two. Add. Existing items. So... Um, I talked about get string to writing to write a get string that seriously okay now I'm that is the one right the next one. this one no other way. I, no no it's gonna get to like the other one mm, no that's not that's not the right one and oh the, Definitely, that is not the right one. So this one you said? Yeah. No. That's going to auto-hide? I hope so. Yep. Don't pin it. Remove the pin. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So how come it didn't happen with the output? Anyways. So, so I... I'm the wrong one. We'll try later. Yeah, we'll try later. Anyways, so uh, forget about these. I told you to write uh, um, if you want to have a get string written, a get string written that actually uh, receives maxlan. To receive a string properly. So if you want to have a get string, you say, I'll get a string for me up to that, that many characters. Why did we, did we write this? Because I don't want to write scanf and put percent 40 not backslash in and then clear the keyboard. I don't want to do that. I want to have one function that gets a string for me and say up to how many. Sadly, you cannot pass a variable to scanf to replace that 40 thingy over there. You cannot do that. In printf, you can. I haven't told you how. But in scanf, you can't. Okay, because you can't do that, we have to come find another way of doing it. So, what did I do? I wrote a function. I said, we're going to have a maximum line length that we can have, whatever that we think is the maximum. Uh, let's actually define it over here. So I'm going to say um, define, or it's even better to say constant integer uh, max uh, line length. Okay? And I'm going to set that one to, say, 1,024. Let's say 1,024 is the maximum length that I want to have. Um, so what I will do now, in here, I will say, okay. Actually, I can't do that. I have to have it defined. Then I'm going to come over here and pause the recording. And all right, so <laughs> behind the scenes, eh? Uh, all right, uh, what do I see? I completely got distracted. Okay, so I have a maximum line length that I can have. Now I'm going to come write a function called get string. In that get string, I'm going to say, you tell me how big you want the function, how big, how many, how many characters the maximum that you want to get, and give me the pointer I'll put in it. But I'm going to create an array to the maximum line length that I can have. So it's a buffer. 
Okay? I would say in my program, I don't think anybody's going to enter more than 1,024 characters. Okay? So I'm going to put that one over there. And then I'm going to say if they ask more than that, I'll shorten it. So if it's more than maximum length, like minus one because of the string, I'm going to make it that size. So even if they tell me I want 2,000 characters, I'm going to say shut up. That's the maximum. If you want the maximum to change, go up there and change the defined statement. Okay? Actually, that defined statement should be in the header file, not in here. So I'll put it in the header file because it's in the, just, it's, it's part of IO property. So I'm going to put the, put it in a header file. So that's where it's going to be. And in here, I have to have my IO included. Include my IO.h. All right? Same thing. Anyways. And then I'm going to say scan up to that many characters. So I have to put over here that 1024 thingy in here. So it, and sadly I can't. Because you cannot put a defined statement over here to change it. Okay, because of this fact, we cannot have that defined statement. So I'm going to go back to 1023, that 1024 as it was before. There is a way. I don't want to make it complicated. Okay? That's the reason that I told you we cannot have that uh, defined statement. You cannot pass that variable inside the string in here. We can't do that unless you build the string and you don't know still how to do it. I don't want to make it too complicated. You could build this yourself, but we don't want to go there. Okay? So now I have this. Okay? So it's going to go up to 1023. So let's, let's that one be 1023. And this one be 1023. That, that's 1024. So it's going to go up to that point and get it. And then... If it's more than that, so if it actually, uh, no matter how many the user enters, I'm going to see what is the maximum that user wanted and put a null byte over there. So if they bigger, it cuts it short. Okay? If it goes bigger, it cuts it short. So let's say my max length is 10. I want maximum of 10. I have a postal code. It's 7. I'm having a 7 over there. User enters 55. 55 stuff are in the buffer, right? I'm going to make the index 7, 0. What happens? String is null terminated, right? So it becomes short, it becomes 7. Now that it's 7, I'll flush the keyboard. All the garbage that is remaining, backslash or whatever is in there, it's going to be going, gone away, going away. Then I'm going to start copying from buff one by one to the string that user wanted to put it in up to null and then null terminate the string. So essentially line 63 to 66 is a string copy. I'm copying it, copy. Therefore, I get a get string. So that was like, let's a student ask, how can we write, you wrote get int, you wrote get double, that it was foolproof. How can we write a foolproof uh, uh, get string? That's how. Now, how to actually put that defined statement? Um, I'll tell, I'm going to, write the code and just let it be there. You go find out how it works. I'm going to write the code for it so to see how we can actually change that value. Are we okay down to here? All right. So wherever you want to get a string, you can use this source code. It's fine. Because I have written it, right? Okay. So back to back to uh, getting names. So in here, I'm going to say uh, for I set, oh, I want to set those things to some names. Okay, how do I do that? Again, it's an array of five things, right? Again, I'm going to point to the mistakes that you made in your quizzes. A string literal is between double quotes. It doesn't need a curly bracket around it. A double quote by itself means an array of characters. You don't need to put another curly bracket around it. Lots of you did. Lots of you. So now, let's say I want to have a Tfardat, Jack. For some reason, all the names that I want to use, they start with J. I don't know why. John. <laughs> Jane. Okay. I don't know why. Joe. Okay. 
All right, there you go. And let's make this one. How do you write Jill? Like this? There you go. Okay. So there you go. Now I have Jill, Jack, John, Jane, Joe. There's no reason. I don't know. For some reason, J comes. <laughs> I have no idea. So now I have asked though, lots of you in the quiz. They do this. You do this. That's wrong. It is already an array. You don't need a curly bracket around it. So essentially, I have, I am setting these five, five arrays of 41. I'm initializing it to these values. Now, if I want to print them out, the format is exactly the same. So I'll go four. I'm going to have an integer i. Four i set to zero. i less than five and i plus plus. Now I'm going to say printf percent s. Go to new line and print name i. Okay. <coughs> exactly the same way. No difference. Now I have five names over here. <coughs> and if I run this program, <coughs> now the output is coming there. <coughs> okay, now it's actually showing all those five things. Okay, let's see where can I put where I can put this. Okay. Uh, where is my mouse? Not that one. This one? Yay! Okay. 5% to final exam, I said? Yes. I lied. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Give me at least two. For that? No. Okay. Next quiz? Sure, I give you 5% for your quiz. Yeah. 5%? I cannot implement it. It's impossible. You have, you have, you have two questions. It's four marks. <laughs> Each question is 50%. I'll give you 5%. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right. So are we okay with this? Now, if I want to get the names, it's the same thing. So I'm going to say, what if, uh, uh, I'm going to have the same thing over here. Enter. Name, number, am I recording? No. Yes, I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different software, yeah. But the other one hangs with on this computer for some reason. Okay, percent D, and um, I'm going to put a, a column in front of it, and then now I'm going to say over here uh, I plus 1. So I'm saying enter name, number, 1, 2, 3. I keep going. Now I'm going to say get string. Get str. Oh, I didn't include my io.h. Include my io.h. Now I'm going to say get str. And in there, I'm going to put, where is the string that I want to put? Uh, I want to put a name i. Do I need to put an ampersand here? Yes. Seriously, you fell for it? No. An array is a an address by itself, by nature. You never need to pass address of an array because it becomes address of an address. That's crazy. Don't do that. Okay? And now, what is the maximum size? 40. And that's that. And then I can print the names again. All right. So, now it's going to run the exact same way. Enter number one, fart add. Frank, uh, Fred, what else? Uh, Fox, <laughs> filter. <laughs> so, so, so there you go. Well, know, somebody's name is Filter. What's, yeah, but that's, believe me, someone's. But you Google it, definitely someone's like Filter Brown. Anyways, so are we okay with this? So it actually goes and puts it one by one in the, in, the, in the array. So essentially, if I want to, so uh, if I want to actually uh, look at individual characters in a name, I can simply do that. I can, I can do something like this. I can say, I can put percent %c in here. Uh, let me jury actually.
let me save this. Oh, uh, so that will be, be zero two. What was I? What did I want? Uh, um, array of strings. Okay. So let's bring up the program again. Now, now, if I told you, write a program that gets people's names and prints their initial, initials, what do you do? How can I print the initials for those names? They're all J, but hey. Okay? So, all you need to do is to put a percent C over here and print zero. That C is a little too big. There you go. All right? So now if I run this, it's going to print J, 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 J for all of them. Okay? If I wanted the second one, then I can put over here one. Because it's a two-dimensional array, essentially, so you've got to see the second letters of the names. Are we okay with this? It is a two-dimensional array. Why you don't look satisfied to me? Are you okay? You look? Okay. Okay. Like, like if, you, if somebody just had your face, they would think you're looking at an autopsy. You know what I mean? Like somebody's being... Ah! And he's like, oh my goodness. Okay. So, uh, are we okay with this? That's the first one. So I put zero. Index zero is the first one. Index one is the second one. Yeah, that one is percent %s, it prints the whole thing. When you put percent %s, it prints the whole array. Whole array 0, whole array 1, whole array 2, yes. The first two? Oh my god, that's a very difficult thing to do. You kidding me? You seriously thought about that? <laughs> how do you print the first two? You print the first two. That's how you do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> if it's more than that, if it's first five, then put it in a loop. How do we, how do we, okay, so that's the first two. And now let's print the first five. So we put another loop over here. I'm going to say, Four, J set to zero. J, I'll put it, don't worry. J less than five. Five and J plus plus. And and then you print character by character and you put J over here. But you have to add one little thing over here that we did not. We need J. I need to do this too. Why? Can somebody tell me why did I do that? So when I say five characters, these have more than five. So it's going to print Willie. Then in here, it's going to print Jack. When it wants to print the fifth one, what is the fifth one? No. no, right? It shouldn't print it. That's why I put that one over here. So if name IJ is a value, it's not zero, it's true. So it's considered as a true condition. It will actually get exit. The loop's going to go on. But if it hits a null, it stops. It won't go through the loop. So let's make that one Joe so it's smaller. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. 
Now, if I run this uh, for for the other one, we're going to see actually the first. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Printf new line. So that's what that's what's going to happen. The first five. Okay, that's essentially the nature of the string. Right when it gets to Joe. So what happens when it gets to Joe? It prints. Is J zero? No, so it's true. True and whatever. Then it becomes O, true and whatever. E, true and whatever. Done, it becomes zero. Because it's zero, for loop ends and comes out. It won't print anymore. <clears throat> if you are in kindergarten, you can always write not equal to null. But you write that, then they know that you don't know what an null terminating character is. If you write something like this in your code, um, C programmers don't do that. Maybe in your company they tell you you have to do that for, to make your code readable. I don't know. But y y rarely C programmers do that because when it's null, it's false anyway. All right? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Are we okay three? So, so I'm going to take this off. Actually... Let's do this. That shows that it's actually that, okay? Are we okay with this? Uh, three, <laughs> print first, five, Cares of names. Oh my goodness! All right. <clears throat> oh, man, people, in in your in your assignments, many of you already handed everything in. They are making a mistake that they put the prototypes and the par parameters of the pro prototypes in a header file with no name for the variable. That's an awful thing to do. So for for those who just copied the header file from the assignment that they didn't add the name for the parameters, I send you a comment back saying that always do this and that. It doesn't mean that you have to resubmit. It's just, I'm just letting you know. Okay? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to get a message soon and you'll find out. Okay? So, exactly five minutes break, not more. Literally five minutes break. After four minutes actually. Because while I was saying five, the minute passed. Yeah, with all this time in my. Oh, I don't have PowerPoint, do I? Shoot. I do not have PowerPoint on this. Hey, 
theory. What is the meaning of life and the universe and everything? Okay, in this five minutes, I have to change my computer. Hey, uh, Siri, can you understand my accent? Yeah. Okay. Usually, usually, usually that accent doesn't have an A at the end. <laughs> you added the Canadian A at the... Uh, Scottish accent that that doesn't mean. Oh shoot. <laughs> 